to domino or not to domino? That is the age old question for us weekend warrior woodworkers. So don't go anywhere and I'll show you an alternative that I made up to the Fez tool domino. So don't go anywhere. We're going to stop the video right here. Um, as I was editing this video, I realized it is a long video. And to give you guys a little bit of an incentive to uh, stick around to the end, uh, I'm going to give something away. So hang with me, wait till the end, get some knowledge from this video, and hopefully uh, win something. So let's get back to the video. All right, a little backstory. About nine or ten months ago, I was creating a cedar chest. For my niece and I wanted to up my woodworking game and I wanted to use um, tenons, loose tenons, um, just to try something new and uh, sort of stretch myself in woodworking. And so I typed in um, loose mortises on the search engine and the domino comes up. The Fez tool domino is one of those tools that um, there's, I don't know if it's controversy or or what it is, um, hate, love. I mean, some people hate it, some people love it. Um, and I think that all is revolved around the price of $1,200. And I'm, I'm not, I'm indifferent. I pick tools and make things that fit in my budget. And the Fez Tool Domino at $1,200 does not fit in my budget. Um, if I had that much money, I would probably spend it on maybe a, uh, maybe a a drum sander that's not homemade just saying you know anyway um so within seconds of seeing the price tag of the fez tool domino i did a quick search for alternatives the fez tool domino with um, maybe threw in their jigs diy and see what, what what i could find and there was a lot of things that came up as far as jigs and and DIY stuff in one that I found that I thought looked really well was Tamara's from 3x3 Custom, her mini mortising jig. Um, so what I decided to do was take that jig and um, add some features to it that would help um, with like quick setups. So I added some pins um, that would help me do some quick setups on, so the thickness of the material, you know, divide that in half and that's where the pin comes in to get it exactly centered. And then I did some laser engraving pieces with some slots and 3D printed blocks to um, get me some easy, quick setups. So I didn't spend a lot of time doing that and measuring. So, um, so I test this out and I found out pretty quick that I had a problem with it. And that was the thickness of the three quarter inch board. Um, I couldn't get very deep mortises. Um, so I did, went back to my CAD system and um, made a few tweaks to it. And I came up with very similar to that, but with acrylic. Um, it's quarter inch thick, same thing, quick reference holes, slots and marks to indicate um, the size of the mortises that I want by moving in and out my 3D printed block. Um, so this is what I used um, for creating those loose tenons for the cedar chest. Um, my son at the time was also creating um, the gaming table from Fisher's Woodshop um, in his school um, woodshop class. And he used this um, in his project too. So it worked pretty well, but there was a problem. My 3D printed block was really close to these um, clamping dovetail um, jigs or system and I had to use a wrench and it really tore this up and it was hard to get it tight so after I got the cedar chest done I decided you know let's um, design this um, a little better um, and maybe add some features that I could use for different projects so the the jig that I came up with is this one. I called it the ultimate loose mortising jig. Um, 
I know you can't have loose mortises because mortises are the slots in the material, but it creates loose tenons with mortises. So loose mortising jig ultimate, you know? All right. So this is what I came up with. And um, the features that it has, it has the same thing down here for creating the mortises, um, as well as a 3D printed blocks to slide in and out. And then these are far enough away that I can tighten them without using a wrench. Um, some other features I added are holes right here to create shelf pins. Um, now, what I used for creating those shelf pins is this little shelf pin drill bit. So this works pretty well. Um, maybe it's stuck right now. I'm not sure why it's stuck. Well, anyway, it worked. So what it does is it it's a three quarter inch um, diameter piece that fits into these slots, and then you drill down, creating your shelf pins. So that works pretty well. For the mortises, I wanted a quick setup to get the or the router bit depth, and that's where these holes come into play. They go from three eighths all the way to an inch at a eighth inch increments so you'll position your router above it plunge down to the depth while it's off um, to the depth that you want and then lock it into place and then there is your depth for your mortise so this turned out really well um, another thing i wanted to do is when you, you can take this plate flip it around and you'll notice i've got this at an angle 45 degree angle so if you want to create, um, say, a waterfall countertop, you can use this to create the mortises in the 45 degree edge. So that um, works pretty well too. So enough talking. Let's start out by cutting out the acrylic for this jig. So I started out using a 45 degree router bit and that did not work very well. It, almost like melted it and I tried slowing it down doing different speeds speeds and speeds but I ended up looking and searching on the internet and I found a drag a diamond drag bit now this is a bit that I got from carbide 3d it's called the MC etcher and what it does is it's a spring-loaded diamond bit that drags along the surface and it creates an etching on top of the acrylic now, this worked a lot better than that router bit, um, so it, it, does, it does a really good job, as you'll see here in a minute. So did the MC Etcher bit from Carbide 3D and did the etching. You can see the different lettering styles. One's just the outline. The other is the um, kind of a pocketed version. And then the, the, just a line all the way around. Just like doing a test piece with the uh, MC Etcher drag bit, I decided to uh, do some test cuts or holes for the different hardware for um, that goes into this jig. So that's what I'm doing right here and cutting different sizes to get that exact size that I need. Now that I got this uh, test piece done, I can go back to my CAD software and adjust the holes on the jig itself. Now here's what it looks like with that uh, etching bit in there. Uh, it turned out pretty good. All right, with all the holes and slots cut out, I'm going to add screws to the jig, attaching it to the spoil board of the CNC so I can remove all the clamping fixtures um, off of this so I can machine the outside of this jig. All right, here's the last pass of the router bit on the uh, jig. A um, little cleanup and then unscrew it. Now I need to add some countersink holes to the back side and the front side of the jig to accommodate some flathead screws. Now with a little bit smaller countersink, I'll do the two holes on the face of the jig. Now that the acrylic part of this jig is done, I could focus on the wood portion of it. And what I ended up doing was gluing up a bunch of boards um, off of that tree I milled down last year. Um, it's the right uh, moisture level, so I could go ahead and 
glue it up and machine what I needed. Now you can use a two by eight to create this portion so you don't have to glue up any wood of your own. Now I just need to trim up the ends um, using my table saw sled. All right, so I need to make some um, angled cuts on the edge of these parts. So I'm just laying that out so I know how to cut this out on the table saw. So I'm just hatching what I drew out and this is what I'm going to cut on the table saw. Um, I just need to make sure I get the right portion cut. So I made a simple jig um, that's a 45 degree to the saw blade. Um, and this is what I'm gonna use to cut um, those portions out on the wood. Now that that's clamped down, I can align the lines on the wood with the blade and clamp this in place. Um, that way it'll be nice and secure when I push this through the saw blade. Hey, that turned out pretty well. Now I'm just gonna flip it to the other side. Now that I've got it clamped down on that other side, I can go ahead and cut the other piece. Now that those angles are cut, I can finish off the cut on each end, laying the piece flat on the table saw sled. All right, so with one edge trimmed, I'm gonna come back and mark this. Cut the other edge. Now that I've got the blanks all cut out, I can use a dovetailing router bit to create um, the slots that those match fit um, dovetailing clamping system will slide into. Now I need to create a slot in the center of that wood blank and my router table is not that deep so I had to clamp on a scrap piece of material um, to center up that piece. With that fence all uh, secured down I can go ahead and add that slot to the center of the blank. Now I knew I'd have some tear out on the edges of this board, so I left it a little big and now I'm just trimming off one edge, still leaving it a little bigger than I need um, for a future cut. Back to the router table to add another um, groove to the center of this board. All right, so we're gonna, so we're gonna use the Gen 1 dovetail jig create the dovetails for the new dovetail jig. To secure the mini mortising jig um, to my workbench, I'm using this scrap piece of wood with some slots on the top of it um, that will hold it in place while I create the new mortises on the new jig. Now the new jig will secure similar to this one um, with a little bit of different connection with the match fit um, dovetailing clamps. I want to reference this side. So when using the plunge router, you don't want to take the full depth at once. You want to take a little bit at a time. So you can see me adjusting it and creating the mortise in a little bit at a time um, as I go down. All right, now I need to clamp the other part to the face of this jig um, to get the other mortises. Now I couldn't use a normal clamp um, on the other side because it wouldn't reach, so I had to get it one of these uh, deep throat C clamps. All right, so I've got the loose tenon pockets cut out on both sides, ready to join. But there's one more thing I forgot to do before I glue this up. It's a good thing I consulted my plans is because 
in this jig, I have some depth gauges spelled out right across here. So I'm going to drill a series of holes um, that are different depths that I can adjust the router bit in the router very quickly. Um, so I need to create those holes and I'm also going to laser engrave the depth of each hole. Um, so when I start drilling them, I'll know the depth that I need to drill it to. So let me laser grave this and then we will uh, add those holes. So I'm using my T-square to uh, mark off each depth, uh, starting out with 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, the tape will just indicate when I need to stop the drill press. When I laser engraved this, I added crosshairs so I knew exactly where to drill. With all those holes drilled, now I can finally get to assembling um, this jig. I Adding glue, make sure I get enough to each of the joints. Now, when you glue this together, you want to make sure you orient it the right way. Um, should have marked top and edge so that uh, you don't glue it on backwards. All right, just adding my pipe clamps and uh, giving it a little squeeze and making sure the two edges are lined up. Um, this glue is going to squeeze out. Um, I find it easier to just scrape it up while it's still wet to also square this up. I want to make sure that it's square. Um, now it's off a little bit, so I'm going to add a clamp, um, pulling it together um, so it ends up being square. And that's the way it'll sit while it dries. So I needed to add some dovetail cuts to the top of this piece after it was glued together. But the problem is there's not enough material there to put it on the router um, fence so it doesn't wobble or angle when I'm putting it through. So I'm gonna use the leftover pieces that I cut off and um, double stick tape that to the ends. Um, it's still not enough so it won't go flat. So I added a little shim there and everything is now nice and flat to the fence. So I can uh, go ahead and cut those dovetails. Now I head over to the table saw cut each side down to six and a half inches. Now I need to cut the angles on each side of the jig. So I'm gonna rotate the table saw blade to 45 degrees. So in order to make this cut, I needed to move the fence to the other side of the blade. Um, that's just the way that it's oriented to cut, make this cut. So I do it on both sides of the jig in order to get it to lay flat so I can do those waterfall countertops. Now I head back over to the router table and add one more dovetail cut to one of those 45 degree angled cuts. All right, so we've got the wood block that we've made. It's all cut out, dovetails in, and it's ready to go. We've got the acrylic. Now you can see here that I've got this one where I've actually um, filled in or pocketed with the etching tool. Um, it makes it pop a little bit more, but this takes a long time to um, etch out on the CNC. And then I did this one where I just outlined. It's hard to see because it's just barely there on the acrylic, but you can see it. You'll need two 3D printed pieces or wood blocks that you make yourself. Then I've got two pins. Um, I got these off of McMaster car. They're a quarter inch diameter, I think about three quarters inch long. The um, micro shift, micro shift. Match fit, all right. 
These are the match fit um, dovetailing fixtures or clamping system. I like these, these are good. You'll need a quarter 20 flathead bolt and then some quarter 20 um, star nuts. I think that's what these are called. All right, now just to assemble this, we add the uh, quarter 20 flatheads, 3D printed parts, and then the uh, match fit dovetailing uh, clamping system. Now, in order to get this to work the way that it's intended, is I've got a series of holes. They all have numbering uh, 3 8 all the way up to an inch in eighth inch increments. Now, the reason that's the way that that is, <clears throat> is this first one, 3 8 that's 3 8 from the edge of the hole to the center of this slot. And that slot is where the bushing guide on the router is gonna go. So that'll put it 3 quarters of an inch away from this surface to the center. That gives you exactly center on a 3 quarter inch bit, on a 3 quarter inch piece. So the way this works is you throw this, your stop pins, into that 3 8 inch mark. Make sure it's tight and then lock it in. Just like that. And then these are your depth gauges from 1 inch to 3 8 So this will determine the depth of your plunge on the router as you make the loose tenon. So let's put this thing into practice, all right? All right, let me go over some of these other holes down here. Um, so let's say you wanted a, you're building a box or a cabinet and you want your first or your, your bottom shelf an inch from the bottom here to the top of that shelf, an inch and a half. Um, that's typical for upper cabinets. So what we're gonna do is drop it in this inch and an eighth slot there and there and then it's a 7 8 pin location which is lined up drop it in get it nice and tight clamp it down and then with your blocks installed you can now do a loose tenon here exactly um, centered for a three-quarter inch shelf and that shelf is an inch and a half from the bottom of the cabinet to the top of that shelf. All right, next scenario. <clears throat> Let's say you want um, a three quarter inch panel exactly flush with this surface here. So same thing, leave that in the seven eighths mark, drop in on the three eighths mark here and here, bring this in, line up the pins and now we're gonna cut a loose, now we're gonna cut a loose tenon that is exactly flush when you install the shelf or the fixed shelf, be exactly flush to the top or the bottom of the cabinet. That's what these holes are for. This hole here is just lined up with this one. So if you want to um, do some more loose tenons like in the center, that helps align it. You can slide it along, pull it tight, clamp it. So you can add your screw there to hold it and then clamp it here, pull those out, and then you can do your loose tenon. As you can see from this jig, I've got these holes and these are for shelf pins. Um, so the way that this works is you take three of your um, pins, drop them into these two holes, now, if you want it in the center somewhere, um, make a mark where you want it, and then line up the um, line up the etchings. Um, so, but if you want it cert, if you want it from the bottom, you can start at this pin here. Those two pins, hold it tight, and then start drilling. Now let's say you want to extend that series. So we're going to take this pin out, 
and we're gonna use this hole right here, put it in the last hole we had, drop that pin in, continue drilling. There's your shell pins. All right, now that I showed you the scenario where um, you can put some loose tenons in to create that shelf or top of a cabinet or, or another scenario. Now let's say there's another scenario where you have this beautiful um, slab and you want to tune it into a desk for your office and you want that nice um, waterfall look. Well, let's pretend that these are those slabs and you've got your, your miter cut and you're ready to add some loose tenons to make this joint nice and secure. So let's show you how this sets up with the ultimate loose tenoning jig. All right, we're going to swap this around or flip it around. So we're gonna bring it out, flip it around, drop it down. All right. <clears throat> Now we're going to drop it into these 3 8 of an inch holes on this side of the slot. We're going to drop those in. We're going to pull that tight like that. And then we're going to lock this down. Alright, now we can grab our nice big slab. Pop the pins back out. We don't need those there anymore. Slide our jig in. So it's nice and flat against this surface. Actually, we need to put some marks on here. Let's get some marks. All right, with those marks on there, I can line up the etching on the jig with the lines on the board, and then use these um, match fit um, dovetailing clamps um, to clamp the board to the jig. I add one on each side to make sure that it is nice and tight. Using the plunge router, I go ahead and uh, take shallow passes until I get the full depth of the mortise. All right, with some uh, loose tenons cut, I can stick them in there. Open it up. You get a nice square joint with loose tenons. Now, I made these pretty short because my, my thickness of my material is only three quarters, but for a slab, you're gonna have probably an inch, maybe an inch and a half, so you can make these longer and the loose tenon slots deeper. But hey, that turned out pretty good. All right, that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. Um, and the ultimate loose mortising jig turned out fantastic. Um, a lot better than I had anticipated. So there are alternatives out there to the Fez Tool Domino. A $1,200 tool is not something that a weekend warrior is even going to think about. It's just out of their price range um, and probably not going to use it that often. So think of other alternatives. I am going to have this available on my Etsy store, the plans uh, anyway. And so, you know, if you want to help support the channel, um, go purchase those plans. It is going to be a DXF for um, cutting the acrylic. Um, along with some STL files for the stop blocks. Um, and then in the plans, it'll have a full list of hardware of things you'll need to complete this along with detailed drawings of the wood block. So I am contemplating while I was making this, I was thinking to myself, would others like this? And I am contemplating making or producing just the acrylic and adding that to my Etsy store as a physical product, just the acrylic. Um, you'd also get the plans if you were to, if, if I were to do this and you were to buy this. Um, but I don't know if anybody would be interested in this jig. So leave a comment, let me know what you think. Is it something others would like to purchase? Um, so leave a comment, let me know. 
As you can see, I have two of these acrylic plates, and I don't need two of them. So one of you lucky viewers is going to win one of these acrylic plates. Um, I'll also email you the set of plans so you can get all the other stuff to make the rest of it. Um, so I just wanted to see how the MC Etcher bit would work, outlined versus pocketing, and so I just don't need two of these. So in order to win one of these acrylic plates is you need to be in the continental United States, a subscriber to my channel, and leave a comment. I mean, if you don't leave a comment, you won't be entered. And um, But in the first of that comment, put in outlined or pocketed, and I'll know which one to send you if you are the winner. Um, depending on how many people enter or leave a comment, um, I may have to use an online generator. I'm not sure how that works. Um, Maybe if you know how that works, uh, leave a comment, let me know. Um, if there's not that many, I'll just write your name and put it in a hat and pull it out. Um, so I think that brings us to the end of this video. Um, oh, one more thing. In the two weeks of the release of this video, I will pick the winner. Um, hopefully I'll give people time um, to view my video. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, I know this is a long one, then uh, good, great, thank you for uh, <laughs> sticking in there and watching it. Um, so I hope to see you next time here on Smedley Wood Design.